before the BMP is just a linear file type so what it could also do is open it in a hex editor one of the most friendly ones is 0xed I don't know if there's a way to pronounce that actually I'm not that kind of person that knows how to pronounce codes like that um, but what you can see here this is all the information that the file image file is built out of you see like this huge amount of data um, this is one language this is the other language, like the right column is something else. It's interpreted from the binaries to the to the decimal. Oh, ASCII, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, ASCII. Um, so what I can do here, I have the header. If I'm going to edit stuff in this hex editor, I'm always going to, even if it's a BMP and it has no real big header, I'm always going to go a little bit down because I just want to keep the beginning of the file intact because otherwise I will most often destroy it anyway. So now... Really destroy it, not just kind of destroy it. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> will not open anymore, but yeah. I'm actually quite sure, like, I'm wearing this hard drive, right? Yeah. It's um, the first hard drive that ever broke on me that I remember, and so I, it wasn't solvable anymore, I lost some nice files on it, so I'm, I'm wearing it now. But I was wearing it the other day, and Florian Kamer from, uh, well, it's a German guy, but he lives in the Netherlands. He came up to me and said, Oh, nice hard drive. I said, Yeah, it has my broken files. I cannot, it's like the paper that was the best paper ever that I lost, it's on there. So now I wear it close to my heart. He <laughs> says, No, but if you give it to me, I can still read it. So there's always people that can read stuff, you know? You can think that you lose your data, but you're never safe. So, sort of destroy. <laughs> but, in, between me and me, it's totally destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> Just copy out a chunk and then delete a chunk? Or no, don't delete it. Copy it, edit, copy, and then go somewhere else and just um, paste it. Like file, or edit, paste, edit, paste. And I do it a couple of times, you see, edit lights up. And then I save it. And then I open it again. With this, with this when you say edit the chunk, do you uh, do we still edit uh, as a hexadecimal number or just like anything? Uh, well, because BMP is indexing every um, every pixel every linearly. Mm -hmm. If you would just edit one little bit, you will probably not find the edit. Right. So you got to be a bit rough. Okay. BMP is very solid because it's just linear, so you can actually use them. Like be as stupid as you want and just copy, 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 paste, 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 and it will work. BMP is cool that way. If you do that with another more compressed, difficult file type, then it will probably suffer too much and not open at all. So, what I did was I used my uh, image file with my newly obtained pimples. I copied some file data, I pasted it, pasted it, pasted it, pasted it, and what you see is that it comes here. You just see, like, it's very, I mean, once you get it, it's actually not that interesting, right? <laughs> <laughs> then suddenly the magic is gone. This is all about destroying your magic. <laughs> and see if you can do something after that. But, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. So just to give you some <coughs> more examples, if I would compress my bitmaps with other colors, like more colors, I would get different effects. So you saw that we just had this like, I cannot zoom in now, okay, that's a shame. Here, the, the change in colors is very different than here, and I have 16 bit colors, 32 bit color. So the changes, like the movement is the same, but the colors will change differently. 
GIF. Well, GIF is also one of my favorite image file formats. Um, I think what best we can do is just open up an image file format and save it as a GIF and you can <coughs> do the same kind of tricks with it except for it's a little bit cuter because it uses interlacing, not interleaving. Interleaving is for indexing the color and in what um, like do we do first the red or the green or the blue channel. That's the interleaving. Now we're talking about interlacing. GIF also uses interlacing because GIF is a, a file format that was built for the internet. So back in the days when people had slower internet, actually it's not so fast here either, you can still see it. But we still had to pay per amount of bytes or whatever. So um, we wanted to have kind of, especially when men were browsing the internet, they, they were really into images. And so <laughs> they wanted to have stuff uh, and they had to pay for the amount of image they would get. So they wanted to know very fast what they were downloading. So they started to make interlaced images and interlacing just gives you one line or a s a one part of the image then moves on to another part of the image and from that little part that it you get first it interprets a little block or a line or and then you can just download for instance with GIF it's just uh, a two pass interlacing I think so then you just get one line, misses one line, sec a third line, and fifth line, and then you can see actually almost half of the image. So you just need to pay for half of the image you want to see, and then you can say, "Nah, I'll move to the next one because this is not what I'm looking for." And then you can pay only half the price for your beautiful images. So GIF and also PNG was built for this. PNG is a little bit more advanced, so it would save you more money. Um, but now, of course, we have faster internet. It's not that important anymore. The cool thing about GIF is, of, of course, that we can make animated GIFs and we can play with the options, this interlation and the different frames that are part of one image file format. Okay, so we save it as a GIF. Uh, this is not an animated GIF. Uh, and it always saves, uh, you can choose to save it interlaced or not interlaced. So, uh, what I can also choose, because I chose here, to save, wait, I'll start from the beginning. I can choose here, file, uh, save as. And I can choose, let's see, CompuServe GIF. But then it will only give me the option to do, um, let's see, all this. Okay, and then I can choose interlaced or non-interlaced. If I save it for the web, file, save for web. It gives me actually a lot more opportunities to change things in the data structures. So I prefer to save it here. Uh, I can also choose, for instance, to use a, an artifact that's called Dither. If you're a designer and you haven't used Dither yet, it's pretty cool to just make nice, say, pattern for instance, and then use only two colors. And then it should be a little bit more like black and white so now you can see like if I would just zoom in I would get this like beautiful scapes right you can use that to make very nice designs so this is just very boring <coughs> artifact so now it's diffused so that would mean that I wouldn't see the 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 lines of the contrast so much pattern is more clean noise it's totally chaos or if we could have a discussion about what noise means and randomness, not now, but... Um, so, you can do that, you can also not do that. You can use 256 colors and have a nice glitch, apparently. Okay. Oh yeah, I changed the colors, obviously. Okay, well, I did that. Sorry about that. So, now I can save it as a GIF. And I can choose again the interlaced or the non-interlaced. And what that means is that if I would put a little bit of alteration in the file type information, then I could get a different outcome. So here, let me just delete this for a second. Now, there, here, it's not, it's interlaced, yeah. 
Oh yeah, okay. So what I can do is I save it here. Or let's save it as a GIF. GIF. There. I have it here. And I can open it in the the hex editor. So now I can do for instance Ctrl F is look for something, find something, and choose to change just these values in the image <coughs> everywhere. So I can make like one really weird random change. And this can go wrong pretty easily. You have to find out what works and what doesn't work. So for instance I can say that hey, what looks interesting. It's pretty hard to see. Um, let's choose a value like And let's just change that. Am I tired? Kind of. Should get a coffee. Replace all. It changed 41 of these iterations. Then I save it. Ctrl S. And I open it. Ah, and it broke. So I go back. I can do Ctrl Z until it's clean. Um, but did. I mean. This can go well really easily or can go wrong really easily. So it's always a little bit of a... I'm going to save it as Composure Interlace. So open it. So I'll just do a little bit of this and then a little bit there and see if that works. It's always a little bit of a, a hassle if you're gonna get anything. Now, now I got black eyes. That's great. I like to give you like all these different artifacts that are part of image file formats. You see, I worked here with Dither too, but it's not it, the image file doesn't rely on that at all. So what I just did now was let's, let me just go back to the original one and see if this is. So now it's it's working, okay? So now it's cool. Now I change like I don't know like one thing. I open again. You see now you saw it phasing, right? Okay, let me put this one next to here. So the inter because I saved as interlace, so yeah, just so it's and then after this line here it broke. So it didn't load in the first iteration of loading the image interlacing, it broke in this line and then it just missed like here we have all alpha, no color, no nothing. Where it doesn't load. So I go back here, save it as original. Now it's good again. Or I, I still got the black eye. But it's okay. Here if I go in the end of the file. Yeah, now you just get in the end of the file this and a little bit of distortion here. Isn't that interlacing from the camera? No. Um, I think actually yeah, it's from the last edit I did that I did So when you break something, you can very easily break the complete file, right? But when you break it right, it can give you these wonderful things. I'll just show you. You can. Try it out when you get it wrong or whatever. So, you know, you get these like very complex, beautiful things. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. You make completely new wor worlds. So, that's my favorite one. I mean, this is also so cool. Photoshop documents are also really amazing. They work with di different channels on top of each other again. But they get this like weird grain. Uh, JPEG compression is built out of macro blocks, and uh, Kim also uses macro blocks in his new compression. So I think it's actually kind of 
important that you understand what a macro block is. A macro block is um, kind of an element that has some kind of of a couple of um, uh, algorithms. One of them is, for instance, a, a cosine function uh, that will kind of give you the possibility to use a gradient for that kind of set of data. These are all the different macro blocks that can exist in an image, a JPEG image. It's like the, the holy or the Rosetta Stone for macro, macro blocks. Um, of course, the elements of the macro blocks can have different colors with different index chrominances and luminescence, so the amount of color and the amount of light to that color. But with these macro blocks, all JPEGs are built. They just have different colors. Normally, though, the macro blocks are not this big, so you won't see them. Plus, they are compressed, so they work perfect in the place, so you will not notice them. If I glitch them, the macro blocks are differently, have different colors, and maybe they have a different indexation, so they come to the surface. So I can make a composition of different macro blocks. And depending on how I compress my JPEG, because you can compress again, you have options when you compress a JPEG. You can use, like, uh, for instance, a zip kind of compression, which makes it, if you break something in the zip, it will uh, make more chaos, because everything is compressed again, so you compress a compression, which means that the whole file will be affected. Or you can do just a, a linear JPEG that indexes the blocks linearly. So the, the glitch that I make depends on, again on what kind of compression in JPEG I use, and then we'll see what happens. But these are very famous or infamous glitches, right? Because these glitches, you see them even absolute bot guys use them for their commercials. So they've become kind of popularized and standardized. They are kind of becoming their own language again. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a file so she, so that it means that she's doing something wrong. So something wrong happens to the camera. And so JPEGs are also used for certain popular things, often in commercial, just to speak this cool language. Yeah, so you can change any kind of image file with a hex editor. Yeah. Also the JPEG. Um, the, the movie. Oh, movie. Yeah, I'll go, uh, I'm trying to finish this as fast so you, you can go. So this is another one. This is a beautiful one where you can see the, the macro blocks really well. Let me... Are you still just uh, editing hex? Here I'm editing hex, yeah. Here I made the macro blocks very big, so you can see I made the quantization of the image so big that you have very little information, so the macro blocks get very big again, so you become, or I became really scary. And you could do that by starting with a really small, like low resolution image and then using really large compression settings, right? Yeah, and then make it bigger again later. Yeah. Zoom in. Ooh, which program <laughs> do I find these macro blocks? What? In what programs can I find these? Uh, well, they're in every JPEG image uses uh, macro blocks. But you can only really see them when I destroy, uh, or when I change the order. So I put a little bit of uh, uh, a glitch, or actually just I, I randomize a little part. So the colors of the macro block are different, or the macro block ends up in a different place where it's supposed to be, and suddenly I can see it because it's not part of the normal structure anymore. But these, but these, oh, these uh, kind of uh, uh, blocks you you, you had uh, like on on a scheme or whatever. ah. This one. Yeah. This is just an image. This is, these are all the 64 macro blocks that are that any JPEG is built out of, okay. and all the image file data of a JPEG. If you want to choose one uh, of of, of uh, one of these, uh, how how do you do it? Choose one. I think that's practically <laughs> impossible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I have to say I'm not a mathematician or a programmer. So I couldn't actually tell, I mean, I should be able, if I would have like another week of really getting into JPEGs and then changing every little part of code and seeing where it changes and then indexing what little string of code I'm changing and then what little part changes to what, then I could reverse engineer this. 
It takes a really long time to do that for a format. I tried to do they, that with they, they actually have done that because they have made this schema. Yeah. This no, can this be a simulation uh, of this, this can be derived mathematically. Yeah. So this is just a combination of uh, cosines in each axis, in the x and y axis. So this isn't coming out of a JPEG image. This is someone made this in MATLAB or something like that, probably. It's just all... Just for the illustration. Yeah, to illustrate how the file works. Yeah. Then JPEG 2000, which was actually meant to... Because you know, JPEG has these hard edges, right? You see here, everything is very hard, decompressed. So they were working, probably they were working someday in the, um, in the hospital and somebody's bone was broken or it was shot by a gun. I imagine this is my history with this. Um, so they were trying to set it or find where this problem was with this bone and they couldn't see it because there were these like hard corners in the image file. They, they had to zoom in and they would get into these macro blocks and they weren't sure it was an artifact derived from the macro block from JPEG artifact. Or if it was really just free, there was the bullet and they had to get it away. Then so cut the arm off. <laughs> no, that's when they made JPEG 2000, which is a medical standard. <laughs> <laughs> and JPEG 2000 uses an, an extra cosine transform to overlay all these JPEG artifacts and to weave it out so it smoothens the image. Which means that when you break it, the first thing you'll see is these waves of the JPEG 2000 that it are meant to not make you to, to find where actually something is wrong and it's not an artifact but then when you break it you see the artifacts of course too but they're much more ghostly and scary so you get these like beautiful weaves then there's a couple of artifacts like Targa and TIFF I honestly couldn't tell you how they're compressed <laughs> they're so complex, there's so many steps and layers that for me it was just like I could say a couple of things, but. But that is the compressed tip. The, the, yeah, the, yeah. The common tip is an uncompressed. Yeah. You can choose. Like so, representation. Yeah. Yeah. so now we've had all this very nice we had to work with the hex code and really do it by hand. And I already kind of showed you that there is people that have made softwares. And I also made a software together with uh, Johan Larsby, who is from Sweden. Uh, it was nice because he had a very uh, important job and he was not allowed to code anything so he had to do it in secret but um, we called it Monglot and so what I said already is like okay so we get to know these file formats and we can make very nice designs but it's actually quite boring so I don't want people to always just get stuck in this technical stuff I want them to be able to do something personal again with it so I can now give them a tool to automatize everything and, to, and so they can do something more with it. They have time to make something real instead of something just technically based. So just, I mean, I also have been reading a lot and about glitches and I find that people, the first thing they always say is like, glitch you cannot define. But every time they're talking about glitches, they're using the same words anyway, like noise and progress or, I don't know, like here, I use the older words, transgress. If I go to a noise conference and I, I make a bingo chart, I could give the bingo chart to people and it's an actual game because they use these words. And I, I made in the last week reader I actually made some bingo charts so people can play together and see who finishes first in any noise conference and it really works. And it's just so stupid that people keep saying you cannot really say what noise is or you cannot say what a glitch is if they always use the same words. They have a vernacular <laughs> themselves too. So I wanted to make that's why like he makes interfaces that are invisible, I make retarded interfaces. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a reason for this. And I actually made this interface, and I'm not an interface designer nor any kind of programmer. So it's more about the idea, that's why it looks this funny. What is most important about it is that you can transcode into any kind of image file format, kind of live. You can say I want to glitch a BMP then I made a joke because people, it's the same thing they use effect and effect so fast that each other you never know what they mean and they don't really say what they mean so it's like where they use these words so fast that okay, we'll just call it effect <laughs> you know? and then I get these things automatically so I can, well, wait, let's put this back to vernacular I can open any kind of image for instance, we just used, my raw is boring 
this one, effect. And I can reach as many times very fast, so we can play it and we can make a whole movie. Uh, also, there is a, um, let's see here, a batch folder, so actually I can use a video export via QuickTime all the frames, save them in one folder, open the folder, glitch them with one specific bitch, and I have a bitched video. So I just wanted it to be very easy for people to do this very fast, and now I can change into many kinds of PNG, for instance. This one is broken now. Does it like, uh, it, it takes the same starting image, it doesn't like work continuously in the same, like if you glitch many times, does it like glitch the always glitch image? No, it takes the same image. Uh -huh. Yeah. So now this is a PNG and it can make very haunting very fast. The thing is though that we were uh, kind of depending on which of these uh, compressions were not proprietary so we could actually embed them. The rest of them you have to first save the image in Photoshop and then you can open them as those styles, uh, compressions. So you can glitch anything in this, even movies. But then you have to change the, the file from it later. It's also a really good software to completely fill up your hard drive in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it goes very fast. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a small image, but you can just click so fast and get a lot of stuff. Whenever you click, it saves a new file? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you can make some cool movies. What does Fizz do? Uh, Have you added that to I think it's yeah, it's just to fit it to the side, but uh, at some point they all have to change <laughs> there's still some error, but it's more like it's more conceptual software I would say that you can actually use when you get the hang of it, it works perfect. Just the <laughs> interface is very funky. That's actually more my fault than anybody else's. Well, okay. uh, wait, it's um it's you can uh, change the you can say for instance I want zero one uh, error zero one and then I get this. It's a like random C. Yeah, but then but you can see the same error in the next image. So you could also make the same error in another image file format. So you can really compare what the same uh, uh, error does to another image file format. So completely the same random C. Same glitch peak. Of course, you can glitch in photos, you can also glitch in videos. And we've also been talking about the differences between software, because software is just a layer you put on top of the image data, and that's the interpretation layer. So if you're working with compressions, like for instance, AVI compressions that are a lot older, sometimes they become more obscure and they're not really working as well on a computer.